Did you know that Michael Jordan broke Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record for double-digit points in his 788th consecutive game? Mind is like blown. Double figures for Mike, 11 points, Tom. A consecutive game scoring 10 or more points, which is an NBA record. And guess what shoe he was wearing? Anyone? Can you guess? Can you guess? That's right, the Jordan 13s, which leads me into what we will be unboxing today, the Jordan 13 Flints. So stay tuned, we're gonna go through a little more history later. But what's up guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa Hill. This is Shea TV. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoy it and feel free to leave us comments. And don't forget, hit that notification as we wanna alert you as soon as we have new and upcoming videos. So once again, for those of you who are new to my channel, we have chapter selections as my videos are very in-depth and detailed on the shoes. So feel free to shift through, but I do as always say, watch the video all the way through because we do give you all the packed information that you need in order to be as knowledgeable as possible on each silhouette that I unbox. So today we are gonna start with that unboxing, then we're gonna hit that history section, followed by some sizing, then styling, then we're gonna close it off with a bit of resale. So here we go, let's get into it, shall we? None other than the Jordan 13 Flints. Let's do this. Once again, a bit delayed on my post as things have been pretty crazy, took a week off, but don't worry. We are going to give you a great video on the flints today. And these are some fresh kicks. My goodness. We've got this lovely pedal, pebbled leather in the toe box here. Just this nice kind of different pebbled leather look that you don't see on all the Jordan silhouettes. It's very cool and different. Then we've got that 3M reflective navy mesh on the medial and the lateral sides of the shoe. This is just crisp. It's so cool too. We're gonna, I'm gonna see if we can get a, a video of this for you, but these are quite reflective, these panels that are on each side of the shoe. And then we've got this nice gray suede on the side, as well as on the heel of the shoe and on the inside of the shoe. Wraps all the way around as far as the collar goes. We've got a little bit of suede on there. If you're wondering too why they call these the flints and why that's a great name, it's this gray. So if you don't know, flint is a hard rock that has been historically used for tools as well as lighting fires. So if you guys were wondering what those rocks are that you've seen on TV where they're clicking it together, that's a flint rock. And typically that rock comes in a darker gray tone, which actually mimics this flint gray perfectly. This is some lovely soft suede. I'm loving this. We got our University of Carolina blue coloring here on the Jumpman logo, which is a nice accent as well as we've got that pebble leather all throughout the tongue with the Jordan name at the bottom here in black and white. And then we've got this nice kind of cat hologram eye here, as well as this really dope hologram on the bottom of the shoe, some nice little polka dot details on there, which is nice. And this has carbon, a carbon fiber plate inside of it. And it also has air zoom cushioning. So these shoes are extremely comfortable. They are perfect for the court. It's just a great setup that they've built into the shoe. I really, really enjoyed when I put these on for the first time because this is actually my first silhouette that I've had for the Jordan 13, as well as the first colorway. And I absolutely am in love with this colorway. I think it's just clean. 
Then we've got the nice lacing system here. These are thin laces. I've actually never seen laces this thin before. It's pretty crazy. And the coloring as well, which I love, is that it definitely replicates the OG pair that was released in 1998. It is literally the definition of the same colorway as this shoe. They did such a great job reenacting all the similarities in this colorway. I mean, it's, it's like it's twin sister or something. <laughs> and the last time we saw the flints actually released was back in 2010. So it has been a minute since Jordan has uh, decided to relaunch this colorway. So I know that a lot of people were pretty excited when this shoe launched because it's been, what, 10 years since we've seen this colorway on the market. But yeah, this is just a great navy and gray tone. These definitely just all kind of work together. So the flint gray colorway was among the first colorways released for the Air Jordan 13s. And it's basically, you know, just got such a great shine to it with this like reflective mesh going all around it. They did just such a good job vamping the shoe up and making it look very different from the previous colorways that they had launched. Ugh, oh, just love this shoe. All right, let's get into the history portion of the show. So it was in 1996, Tinker Hatfield was working on a new shoe for Michael Jordan, but he was having a bit of difficulty coming up with a new idea for what shoe he wanted to create. Then all of a sudden he was watching Michael Jordan on the Bulls on TV and he had this kind of new different lens he was looking at when he was watching Michael Jordan playing. It was almost as if he saw this kind of instinct that Michael Jordan had while he was on the court. He was stealth, he was able to preserve his energy, he would attack at the right time. It was almost as if Tinker thought to himself, he has feline type characteristics and specifically like a black cat. So Tinker then sketched everything out. He hopped on a plane and went and flew to go see Jordan so he could meet with him and show him this new concept for a new shoe. And when he met with Jordan, he was actually filming the commercial, which is now known today as the Frozen Moment. Pretty cool commercial. But this was the great, op the best opportunity for Tinker to sit down with him and basically show him what he had drawn out. And it was this new conceptualization of a black cat. And Michael kind of froze, it's funny, right? Froze in that moment commercial, he kind of froze when he had mentioned the word black cat and he had seen images of the black cat because Tinker actually at that moment in time had no idea that that was a nickname that Michael Jordan's closest friends used for him. And so he had asked Tinker, hey, how did you know what my nickname was that my closest friends use? And Tinker had absolutely no idea. And so when you're looking at this shoe, the shape of it is actually supposed to encompass a paw and this eye is supposed to encompass like a tiger uh, eye of some kind, you know, like a feline eye. So it definitely has some predatorial kind of behavior in it in that sense which is just interesting where, you know, Tinker kind of started from the ground up and creating this idea and then generating this idea that actually was already linked to Michael Jordan. And so this shoe was originally released in 1997, the specific silhouette. Uh, the Air Jordan 13 dropped in seven colorways, five highs and two lows. They were also featured in Spike Lee's He's Got Game, I think we all know Denzel Washington was in that movie and his character specifically was wearing the Jordan 13 silhouette. Hey, Chevy. Ah. <laughs> these are the new Jordans. That's it, huh? Yeah, how much these cost, man? 139, 150 with tax. 150? Yeah. Where the holes at? They're on the inside though. You gotta oh. lace them up that way. Yeah, do that for me, man. Huh? Yeah, no problem, huh? All right. So this was definitely 
a silhouette that gained some traction and was definitely seen on celebrities' feet. Now we're gonna move more into Michael Jordan's kind of history behind this shoe. So the Flint 13s specifically were set to be the shoe that he was gonna wear in his final NBA All-Star game, representing Chicago. Uh, MJ would lead the league basically in votes and lead in the game and lead to victory, uh, dropping his guest 23 points. MJ earned NBA All-Star game MVP honors for the third and final time, all while proving he was still the best on basketball's biggest stage. And it was all set to happen in the Flint 13s, but it didn't. So rather than debut the Flint 13s with a city-centric NBA All-Star uniform inspired by Lady Liberty or the Big Apple, MJ and the rest of the league's elite wore their team jerseys for the mid-season classic. So there were big plans for the shoe, but unfortunately they got scrapped. <laughs> And so this silhouette definitely didn't get its time to shine on Michael Jordan's feet, but that's okay because it became known as the people's shoe. And so, you know, at collegiate athletes in 98, in 2005, in 2010, they were able to make their own stories in this silhouette. And this was actually kind of a lone colorway. All of the 13s that we had seen previously were all linked to Jordan in some kind of way. And they were linked to the Chicago Bulls colorway in the red or the black, but you know, this specific colorway was not necessarily linked to his college or his NBA team. So this was the first shoe that really paved this new way for, you know, others to basically create their own memories in the shoe. And they weren't tied specifically to a moment in time that maybe Michael Jordan was known for, which is kind of interesting. And this also, was the first Air Jordan signature to release under the Jordan brand subsidiary. Uh, best disguised by the new shiny silver box uh, of all of the OG 13s, the Flint 13s were the lone colorway, as I mentioned early way, earlier. And so this shoe really kind of just opened doors and paved the way for what was to come with the newer silhouettes in the Jordan series. And so this is definitely a defining, very historical shoe but you know this shoe was obviously definitely designed for performance and for the coat court all right one last note for the history portion this specific silhouette was supposed to be michael jordan's pair of shoes that he was going to wear as his last shoe while he was playing for the chicago bulls if you all can remember this was an insane intense game this was in the 98 finals against the Utah Jazz. Jordan gets the ball. He's going for a three-point shot, goes up, and misses the shot. Into Jordan, a prayer. We go to Utah. So, of course, the Bulls go on to game six, and this shoe is phased out, and he is then wearing the Jordan 14 silhouette in the game six finals. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead. If that's the last image of Michael Jordan, how magnificent is it? I don't think you can put it into words, Bob. I mean, what he's done here in this fourth period. So this shoe could have been, I feel like a much bigger historical shoe, but unfortunately, it was one missed three-pointer shot. And these shoes just missed the cut <laughs> by just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so that's the history portion of the show. We're gonna move on into sizing. I'm just going to actually move some things around here. I'm gonna pull another shoe out here just to kind of show some differences here. I ended up ordering a 7.5 and I also ended up ordering a size eight I wasn't quite sure exactly which shoe size I wanted to go with just because this is actually the first time that I have bought a Jordan 13 silhouette. So I just didn't really have an idea of how it was gonna fit. Uh, but actually I would say I would stay true to size. 
I typically am a 0.5 in men's, which is a size nine in women's. And so these are the 7.5s. I tried them on, they fit me perfectly. And I have very narrow feet with high arches. This has great art arch support as well as this just really fits narrow feet very comfortably. I mean, just in general, you can see here how narrow the tongue is and these laces definitely lock your foot in pretty solidly. And so overall, this is just a great comfortable shoe, especially with the ankle support that it uh, provides. It just is an all around good shoe. I don't know what this little hair on there is. Uh, but yeah, I definitely could wear a size eight. I feel like I would go that direction if I were planning to wear thicker socks. But with this specific shoe, with the different socks that I tried it on with, I would definitely say that 7.5 was the go-to size as opposed to going a half a size up. So definitely my advice to you is stay true to your size. Alrighty, next up, been looking forward to this section, the styling section. So I did a couple different options for the shoe. I know this is an athletic shoe, but I don't think that you necessarily have to wear athletic clothes with it. As of course, this shoe was made for the courts. I didn't have any basketball clothing options as I am no longer currently really playing basketball, but I just wanted to give you some great lifestyle options because I think this shoe can definitely be worn off the court. Now, first up, the look that I went with was a pair of black simplistic biker shorts. I then paired that with a nice hooded sweatshirt by Menor Duroit. And that hooded sweatshirt, the thing I liked about it is it has some denim accents on it, as well as some zipper accents on the back. It's got a feline on the back as well. So as you guys now know that these shoes are based off of a feline predator, I thought that that was the perfect picturesque moment on the back of that hoodie to be representative of this shoe. And, you know, just the light blue denim with the light terry gray coloring and hints of black, I think just really worked with this shoe. It's just semi-casual slash athletic look. And, you know, it just gives you a different look on how an athletic shoe can be paired with more casual items, not necessarily all athletic wear. All right, now next up for the second look, I definitely went in a more athletic direction. I think that this specific gray, this flint gray, definitely is obviously gonna go well with other types of gray. So I kind of chose some light gray sweatpants, which I then paired with, as you can see this shirt I'm wearing, I'm in love with this shirt. This is the Melody Asani t-shirt and it says C Monaco School Quincy. If you guys have seen one of my other previous videos on the Melody Asani cherry shoes, that's right. Uh, I talk about how much I love that movie, Love and Basketball. And obviously this is a basketball shoe. So I thought that it would be an amazing pair to have this cool Melody Asani, Asani shirt with those just simplistic gray sweatpants. And I think definitely these shoes will go well with any color sweatpants. This is just, you know, a great colorway that you can really mix and match with your different colored sweatpants. And it's extremely a comfortable outfit. It's a little hot when I did the shoot in those, but you know what, I made it through. <laughs> Thank God I had a t-shirt on, right? Okay, and last, my third look was a just simple black tank with some mom denim jeans. And I just wanted to give you guys another look with some denim options because I think that this specific silhouette and the specific colorway will go great with denim just because obviously this nice navy hue that it's giving off with the nice gray paired with that white. It's just really, I think it's a great accented shoe that will go well with pretty much any shade of denim that you choose to wear. Uh, for this specific outfit, I did choose to go with a lighter denim and I think that it worked perfectly. It's just a nice, simple, casual look where, you know, it gives you another option outside of the athletic option to wear around, you know, when you're hanging with your friends or just walking around the city. Definitely a great idea to kind of pair it with a denim piece. 
And that is the styling portion of the video. Now we're going to move on to our concluded section, which is the resale of the shoes. The shoes pretty much flew off the shelves as expected. I think a lot of people were extremely stoked to have this flint colorway coming out. And, you know, it definitely launched on a lot of foot sites. You could find the shoe at a ton of different places, but they definitely sold out pretty quickly. It was a difficult shoe, honestly, to cop if you weren't on your A game and, you know, logging in at exactly the time that these shoes were being launched on the different platforms and websites. But I managed to cop two and luckily I found a size that fits for me. Sometimes you can get unlucky if you're unsure of the size that will work best for you, which is why I give that styling and sizing guide so that you guys are prepared before you order a specific silhouette. As far as resale goes on these, you're definitely gonna make some lunch money, guys. We've got from size seven to size 15, the average is going around 232 to 300. Again, these shoes retailed at $190. And so, you know, you'll make a decent little bit amount of profit off of it. You're not gonna go crazy and, you know, double your money really, but there's some money to be made off of these. And what I've noticed lately is these shoes have been selling quite steadily so if you were able to cop a bunch of these and you're trying to resell them this is a great cop because people are definitely looking for this specific silhouette they are in demand and so i don't think if you decided that you didn't like the silhouette and you want to sell it you're not going to have an issue selling this shoe people are definitely seeking this specific silhouette because it is a great altogether shoe and as far as if you didn't cop it this is also a great time for you to purchase a shoe. You're not paying that much over retail, depending on what size you are. As I always say, this is StockX where I'm getting, you know, these numbers and it's always evolving and changing. So if you watch this video, you know, a year from now, this price may not be the same, but it is definitely a great opportunity for those who weren't able to cop this shoe to go on the resale market and make a purchase for that. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning into my channel, Shea TV. My name is Marissa Hill. I just am always appreciative of you guys hopping on, leaving me comments, giving these videos likes. Uh, on a side note, I want to just go and give a big thank you to my 3,000th follower. I know that was a little bit ago already. But Joey Marin, yay, from Bayside, New York. You are my 3,000th subscriber, and we're going to show a clip for him. On Shea TV, it's Joey here, your official. 3,000 follower. Super proud of you guys. You guys are awesome. You're going to be huge one day. I know it. There's no doubt in my mind about it. And super shout out. Thank you for the Supreme Poncho and the Supreme Oreos. Uh, as you guys had promised. Thank you for delivering great content. And thank you for delivering great gifts. 3,000 out. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Welcome to my community. I'm so appreciative of having you a part of this up and coming channel. And once again, as I've told you guys in the past, every thousand followers I get, I will be sending out Supreme Oreo cookies as well as Supreme Poncho. And we are looking to reach that next goal of 4,000 subscribers. So please, please, please keep subscribing to my channel. And as well as if you're interested in purchasing these shoes on the resale market, I do have affiliate links listed below and those affiliate links definitely help my channel. So if you are looking to purchase these shoes and need a place to find them, go in my description and you will find those links that will direct you right to where you need to go. So thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like as well as hit me on the comments. Love hearing from you guys. And don't forget, hit the notification because we want to alert you as soon as we have a new video coming out. Until next time, we'll see you all later.